Hi guys and welcome to this, my video on the cosine rule, part of the year 11 general maths course here in Australia. And you're going to say, but I'm not in Australia. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. The cosine rule is amazing and actually used worldwide. So my video hopefully will still be useful. Now, who am I? Darren from Maths Guru. Yes, there we go. Maths Guru, my little corner of the interweb. Um, and basically I just create videos for hopefully maths uh, that make sense, are humorous, um, and basically we'll just give you an idea of how to smash the course. But the only thing I ask from you, and it's very needy, and again, I'm not going to sound too, is can you subscribe to YouTube? All right, I'm sitting in a room on my own, talking to myself. Very few people actually watch maths videos. And the fact that you found it and watching it, it would be great if you just clicked because it sort of gives me the motivation to continue. I mean, to be perfectly honest, I, I probably could be out there be doing humorous comedy videos, um, but I love doing math videos. So if you can subscribe and tell your mates and tell your teachers, it really would mean the world to me, like massively. You don't know how excited I get when I check at the end of the day how many people have clicked that button. And I go, what? I've gone up four people. That's amazing. What are the learning objectives? What am I going to cover? Well, it's pretty much there. Cosine rule stuff, really, uh, which is building on the video we did a little bit earlier on, surprisingly, the sine rule. So in the last video, if you haven't watched it, I looked at the sine rule and we worked out that, well, you know, it's important to make sure that we label the sides that we know that now an angle has an opposite side. This angle here has an opposite side. This angle here has an opposite side. Really, really important because once we identify that, that's awesome. And we found with the sine rule that if we had an angle and an opposite side, we could find missing side lengths and missing angles. It was freaking awesome, yes? But the question is, what happens if we don't have an opposite side length and an opposite angle? Hmm. Well, funny enough, this video wouldn't be called the cosine rule if it wasn't basically possible. Right. Again, I need to just point out here that although we call this angle here C and that little C, it doesn't really matter. In fact, it becomes more complicated with formulas if you get too tied into, you know, that's C, that's got to be C. It's just that for sine rule, we were very interested in angles and opposite sides. That's it, all right? So if I now show you the formulas for the cosine rule, you're probably going to just cry a little bit, all right? No, please keep watching. The first thing is, write it in your summary book, all right? Write it in your summary book because these formulas are incredibly important. This one here, although it looks disgusting, is actually really, really nice. And again, you're just gonna put it in your calculator and your calculator is gonna do the hard work for you. But this here, C squared, basically means the length of a side squared. So this formula here lets you find missing side lengths. Again, put it in your summary book. Here, is another formula. Believe it or not, all I've done is rearranged that top formula and written it in a different way. But it's useful in your summary book because you guys really shouldn't have to rearrange formulas. But what this here tells you is if I've been given three side lengths, I can find a missing angle. All right, so here, this one here, I'm actually given a side, a side, and an angle. In this one here, I'm giving a side, a side, and a side. So I'm giving all three sides. Again, don't worry if you're like, what the hell is he talking about? It'll make sense in just a moment. As usual, it probably makes more sense to use examples. So find side C. Because it's telling me to find a side length, I'm going to use my side length formula here. And again, we are very lucky that the question has said find side length C, and in this situation, the formula starts with a C. But I want to sort of change that a moment. I like to think of this as two sides and a huggable angle, like a hug mug, yes? If I look at this, I've got a side here, I've got a side here, and they are hugging that angle. Yeah, they, oh, they're like arms hugging the angle. Oh, my arm missing, my arm is missing. Look, do you notice that? I've got a hand, no, I've got no hand, I've got a hand. No hand. Anyway, um, so the point of it is here, the formula works because what it says is take this side and call it A, this side here is B, and that angle there is C. So what I'm going to do now is so that the formula works for you, I'm now going to say let that be A, let that be B, and let that be capital C. Don't care what this triangle is written on here. Do not care in the slightest. I'm going to rearrange. I'm going to write my own letters on there because I can do that. So now we want to find a side length. We've got to use the right formula. I've already highlighted my formula here. So I'm going to write my formula out that says C squared equals 
a squared plus b squared minus 2 times b times c times the cosine of a, sorry. Let's try that one. Try that one again. 2 times a times b times the cosine of angle C. Angle C, you always laugh there. In Australia, down here in Victoria, there's a place called Angle C. Actually, I think there's one in, in the UK as well. Anyway, um, right, so A squared is the side length of A, or the A side length, so that's 27 squared, plus little b squared, which is 34 squared. And again, I've called this my little A, that is my little b, this is my capital C. Minus two times little a, which is 20, uh, which is 27, times 34, times the cosine of big C, which in this situation is 50 degrees. Now, you don't need to put the degrees in your calculator. Lots of people say to me, how do I put degree sign in? Well, you don't, you don't need to. And again, in this situation here, what I'm gonna do now, weirdly, lots of people use solve. You can use solve, yes? In fact, let's use solve, all right? So I'm gonna use solve, he says, type in again, so menu. Uh, algebra one, solve. So I'm gonna do C squared equals, uh, what have I got? 27 squared plus 34 squared minus two times 27 times 34 times. And again, you're gonna use your trig button here to do cos and then in that situation 50. We don't need the angle, we don't need the degree, sorry. And then I'm gonna do comma C. Now again, before I hit enter, I'm just gonna check I've got that right. C squared equals 27 squared plus 34 squared minus two times 27 times 34 times the cosine of 50, yep. And the last thing I'm gonna do is check that I've got degrees up here. All right, and now fingers crossed, all should be good. If I hit enter, oh my goodness. It's giving me two values. Why is it giving me two values? Well, the calculator's being clever uh, or not so clever because we know that for anything that has c squared in it, because we're solving for c squared, we can have a positive value and a negative value. Right, now, so c, what does c actually stand for? It stands for a side length. Can I have a negative side length? Probably not. So in which case, we would be looking for the positive value there. So c is equal to, correct to what is it, two decimal places, 26.55, and they haven't given me any units, so we'll leave it at that. I mean, sometimes I write the word units, but again, going back to this question, firstly, important to know which formula we're using. We're using that one there. Secondly, it's important to know that we can relabel the sides, yes? We're looking for the two sides that hug the angle. Call one of those sides A, calls one of those sides B, and call the angle C, then angle C, I can't help myself, it's, it's, anyway. And let's move on to another example. Again, what do we want? Find side B to two decimal places. So again, let's look. I've got a side, I've got a side, and I have a huggable angle. That's what's telling me I'm using the cosine rule. So I'm now gonna call that little A, and call that little B, and that there now is C. So I'm gonna get rid of that A, B, and C there, not interested. And so we are going to say, oh, and what's that gonna be? That's gonna be little c there, all right? So I know they called it b in the question. I don't care. I'm gonna relabel it so my formula works. So what do we got? We got c squared equals a squared, which is gonna be 21 squared, plus b squared, which is 23 squared. Again, these sort of these ones here are always the side lengths that are hugging the angle squared. Doesn't matter which order you have them, still works. Minus two times 21 times 23, times the cosine of the huggable angle of 31 degrees. And again, that pretty much is all we need to do. Once you've substituted the things into the equation properly, the rest of it, I think, is relatively child's play. And I don't mean that to sound rude. It, it, it is, just basically this is about knowing how to you know, choose the right formula more than anything and putting the right numbers in the right place. So what have we got here? C squared equals 21 squared plus 23 squared minus uh, two times 21 times 23 times the cosine of 31. I'm gonna type it, guys, it's just quicker for me to type it. And what am I trying to find? Again, C. So just check I got the formula right. 21 squared plus 23 squared minus two times 21 times 23 times the cosine of whatever else. Again, I got a positive and a negative. I, don't, I can't have a negative side length. So in that situation, my value of C would be given as to two decimal places, 11, 
Hopefully this is making sense. All right. Well, I hope so, otherwise I'm pretty shocking. Now, find the largest angle to one decimal place. All right, so the largest angle, believe it or not, will be opposite the largest side. So where is my largest side? That one there. So this is the angle we're gonna try and find. So because we're trying to find an angle, we're gonna use this formula here, and the angle here is called C. So I'm now gonna change so this is the angle I'm gonna try and find, that is my capital C, so I'm now gonna call that little c. What about the rest? Well, it doesn't matter what sides you've got, that one there can now be called A, and that one there can call B, the reason being is because they are hugging the angle I want. So A and B always hug the angle I want. So just so I don't get confused with the question, I'm gonna delete that B, I'm not interested in that A, and I'm not interested in that C. I've got my values that I want. Right, new formula. So let's do the cosine of C is equal to A squared. All right, so little a is four, so that's four squared, plus B squared, well little b is five, so that's five squared, minus C squared, which is six squared, all divided by two times A times B. And there we go. Hmm, how on earth am I going to do this? Because that looks very complicated. Well, I'm gonna do menu, algebra, Numerical solve, whoop, can you do that? And again, I'm gonna do cos of C equals uh, four squared plus five squared, oops, minus six squared, all on two times four times five. And again, whenever I do this, I always make sure that I've typed it in properly. Uh, yep, and then I'm gonna do comma C, because that's what we're trying to find. Hit enter. It wants it to one decimal place, 82.8. So there we go. So angle C is 82.8, and this time we have to write degrees because it's an actual angle. See what we've done there? So I think the trick to these questions is labeling the triangle properly, yeah? Or, or deleting what they've put on there, and you going, no, I want the huggable angle to be C. I want the two side lengths to be A and B. And then hopefully, the rest of it makes sense. Now again, we have to apply this stuff. Now I know I've written the sign rule up there. That's obviously when I actually did the PowerPoints. I forgot to change that to cosine rule. Let me just check back, is that? Yep, see, again, I typed sign rule for all of those. They're actually the cosine rule. Sorry guys, um, I can't update the PowerPoint because uh, it's not gonna quite work that way, but hopefully you're just happy that's gonna be the cosine rule. Ha, huh, made a mistake, shucks. A yacht left point A. Now, normally people at this point go, oh, it's bearings question. Probably is a bearing, but we'll see that later. A left, a left, a yacht left point A and sailed 15 kilometers due east. Now, the reason they're telling you that is we now know that that there is a right angle. We'll come back to that in a moment. 15 kilometers due east to point C. Another yacht started at point A and sailed 10 kilometers to point B, as shown in the diagram. The distance between points A, B and C is 12 kilometers. So they've given me that distance there. I've got that distance there. Uh, what is the angle between their directions as they left point A? What was the angle between their directions? So it's wanting me to find this angle here. Hmm, can we do that? How on earth are we going to do that there? Oh, hold on a moment. They've actually given me another value here. Ah, oh, they've actually given me my three side lengths, which actually means I can find this angle here, because I'm now gonna call that C, which means that must be little c. And remember, anything hugging the angle I want or I'm given, that's gonna be my A and B. So I'm actually now gonna call that A, let's get rid of that. And that's already B, that works for me. So life is good. Rightio, let's get rid of that. Let's call that little c. So therefore, we've got the cosine of angle C, which is what we're trying to find, is A squared, which is now 10 squared, plus B squared, which is 15 squared, minus C squared, which is 12 squared, divided by two times A times B. Firing up my calculator to be sure, to be sure, but jeebus, but this is another terrible accent. My apologies now to Ireland. Half my family are Irish. <sighs> Cos C, let's make that small c equals what have we got? 10 squared plus 15 squared 
minus 12 squared. Now, a lot of these you should be able to do in your head, which is going to be 2 times 10 times 15. Always check what you've done. And don't forget to do the comma and C in this situation. And so that gives me, what do we want? Correct to two decimal places, 52.89 degrees. So we now know that C is 52.89 degrees. And don't forget the degrees because it's an angle. Find the bearing of B from A. Hmm. So again, it's really hard for me to be able to show you this. But because I'm finding B from A, I'm starting at A. I draw my north line, which they've already done, and I'm trying to find the angle that when I turn clockwise, I get to face B. So there we go. That's the angle I'm looking for. So I'm looking for this angle here. Well, hold on a moment. We know from the question that this angle here is 90 degrees, and I know what angle C is. So therefore, my bearing is going to be 90 degrees, minus 52.89 degrees. So again, I'm going to do that on my calculator, but off screen, because you guys can do that. So 90 minus, what was it, 52.89. Hit enter. Now that gives me 37.11. So that there gives me 37.11 degrees. But it says in the question, to the nearest degree. So it says to do it to the nearest degree. All right, so we're going to round that to the nearest degree. So that's actually going to be 37 degrees. And is that my bearing? Mm -mm -mm. How many digits do bearings always have to have? Yeah, so therefore my bearing is actually 0, 3, 7 degrees. It's always got to have three digits. All right, so again, we're starting to mix math subjects together there. Yeah? We're trying to do a bit of bearings, a bit of sort of cosine rule. And that's what we're going to do to you in an exam. A bushwalker left their camp at point C and walked eight kilometers to point B. Oh, we've got eight kilometers there. As shown there, a friend walked 11 kilometers to point A, a distance of nine kilometers from B. Oh, here we go again. They've given me three side lengths. Thank you very much. What was the angle between their directions as they left C to one decimal places? Right, so a bushwalker left the camp at C and walked to B. A friend, da, da, da. what was the angle? We're looking for this angle here. So I'm going to call that there angle C. So there's little c. I'm going to call that little a and little b because they're hugging my angle. They are going to be my a and b. Right, can we work this out then? I should coco. Okay. So again, the cosine of c is equal to a squared, 8 squared plus b squared, 11 squared minus c squared, 9 squared divided by 2, a B. All right, let's fire up my calculator because I'm not going to be able to do that in my head. All right, menu, algebra, and solve, you'd be so kind. What have we got? The cosine of C, oops, equals fractiony bit 8 squared plus 11 squared minus 9 squared, uh, all divided by 2 times 8 times 11, and then comma C, hit enter. Oh no, what's happened there? Why have I got so many values? Ah, because I made a mistake. Did I want to do solve? Nope, I should have done n solve. So fingers crossed, I think I can just go back here and put an n in front of it, hit enter, Whew, and there it came out. So that was good to know, I'd used the wrong one. So we know that C is equal to 53.8 degrees. And again, I've got to put the degrees in, and it said to one decimal place. So it was important here to know that we were answering to one decimal place. What was the bearing of B from C? And again, I'm from C, so I now want to go all the way clockwise around until I am facing B. There we go. That's the angle I want to find. Sheesh. How am I going to find that? Well, using a bit of maths. We know that angle there is 90 degrees. That angle there is 90 degrees, that angle there is 90 degrees. So my bearing is made up of 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, and C. So basically, my bearing is going to be 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus, well, obviously, we want to do to the nearest degree. So 53.8 degrees is going to become 54 degrees. 
and there we go doing that on my calculator which I'm going to do off screen 270 plus 54 gives me 324 degrees that's already got three digits so 324 degrees would be my bearing Oh, another question. How many more questions are there? Well, as it turns out, this is the last one. A bushwalker left his camp. Uh, he left his base camp and walked 10 kilometers in the direction of that, uh, in the direction of 070 degrees. So first things first, they've given you a bearing. They're telling you that this angle here is 70 degrees. Okay. His friend left base camp, base camp and walked eight kilometers in the direction of 120 degrees. Find the angle between their paths. Well, if I know that that angle is 70, and that angle there is 120. I can find that angle there. So the angle is going to be 120 degrees minus 70 degrees, which is going to be 70, 80, 90, 100, which is going to give me 50 degrees. So I now know that this angle here is 50 degrees. Hmm, is it a sine rule or a cosine rule question? Well, let's just check. I've got an angle, I've got a side, and I've got a side, and those sides are hugging that angle. Oh! Thank you very much. So life is good. How far apart were they when they stopped walking? That's code for can I find this one here? Right, let's label my side lengths. There's my angle. That's going to be C. I'm going to get rid of that. Thank you very much. That's going to be A. Nope. I'm going to call that B. And nope. I'm going to call that little C just so that my formula works and you don't try and confuse me. So therefore, we've got that C squared is equal to A squared, 10 squared plus B squared, 8 squared minus 2 times A times B times the cosine of the angle in between, which is 50. Can I do that in my head? No. How am I going to do it? On my cash calculator again. So in this case, I'm going to just do menu solve because I'm not doing um, uh, angles. I can just use the solve. And again, C squared equals 10 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 10 times 8 times the cosine of 50. Uh, comma C and hit enter and again it's going to come out with two answers one's positive and one is negative so in this situation I'm going to say that C is equal to what's the two decimal places 7.82 did they give me units they did in this one kilometers ka-ching there we go and believe it or not that is the end of this video hopefully it's been useful it's about your calculator relabeling the sides using the right formula and basically I should see everyone should be able to smash this topic Thanks very much for watching. My name is Darren from Ask Guru. Please head over there and sign up. Get all these uh, lessons and resources. Really, really helpful for you. Sign up to uh, YouTube if you can. And tell your mates, all right? Really, seriously, tell your mates. Hopefully the video will be useful to them. And your teachers. Your teachers need to know why are they still using things like Ed Raylo when my stuff is obviously much, much better. All right, that's a little bit of a flex. <laughs> right, until next time, I'll see you again. Take care and please stay safe.